want to know this. Is it creepy at the age of 27 to frolic on my front lawn in a sprinkler? Is that creepy? Yeah. Doesn't matter. I'm going to do it anyway. Don't care. Don't care. Short shorts as well. All right. Use nair, sir? All right. That's cool. yeah. It works, all right, for my unibrow. I know. It works. That's, all right. That's nice. Anybody in here in a, like a new relationship? Anybody? Nobody's dating anyone. <laughs> Lonely people we got going on here. So, but I, I got into a relationship with a girl a couple months ago, and she dropped a bomb on me uh, just this, this past week. And these are deal breakers. They're definitely deal breakers. She should have told me these at the beginning of the relationship. I'll tell you them. First off, she sat on a plane next to Shooter McGavin, didn't tell me. Was flipped off in person by Mr. Bob Saget, didn't tell me. <laughs> And she hates the song Lean On Me. Who hates the song Lean On Me? Seriously! Racist. <laughs> but no, they're, they're technically not deal breakers. I, I, I let it go. We're still dating. Things are going quite well. Um, actually, a couple weeks ago, I did a, a late show. And I, I got out of there. It was like 1 o'clock in the morning, and I was tired. And I go, sweetie, why don't we just go back to my place, and we'll just crash. And, and I meant sleep. I meant sleep. But the moment we got back to my house, I got like a second win. I was like, hey, sweetie, want to watch an episode of Glee? <laughs> Don't mock that. That's great foreplay. I'm saying that works. <laughs> Not for her. <laughs> I love that show. It's fun. But uh, things were getting interesting. We ended up uh, frolicking our way upstairs. Things are getting exciting. I'm getting really, really excited. I'm smiling. And all of a sudden, she turns to me and she goes, I'm like, sweetie, you gotta speak up. I don't know what you're saying. And I came to realize that to be, do you have the required materials to continue these extracurriculars? That's what I thought. And so I get up, I go, I go and search for this device, and I'm scrounging around the top drawer. And well, can I just say something really quickly? I have a complaint to make with uh, Orbit Gum. Your sample size feels entirely too much like that of an old-school prophylactic. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I was not going for fresh breath at that moment. That's not what I was going for. She had to use it, though. She had a cup of coffee, you freaks. Seriously. Oh, man. Freaks. So Glee turns the ladies on. Or me. You know what another thing that turns the ladies on? Facial hair, the beard. I don't know if you can tell I have facial hair in the back. I have a beard. I love facial hair a little bit too much. And I just want to tell you about three types I think shouldn't exist in the world that we live in. First off, we have the soul patch. Anybody have a soul patch out there? Mom? <laughs> she shaved it, it's cool. <laughs> I'm Italian. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, the soul patch is the only type of facial hair that could be mistaken for barbecue sauce. <laughs> I call it the Southern Hitler. <laughs> got fans of Hitler in the house? What's going on here? <laughs> okay. Weird. But the, the second type is uh, a landing strip or manding strip. We've all been to the Italian festival. I'm sick of it, okay? <laughs> Don't go there. It's just me and a meatball. That's it. It's true. Um, then that third one, that final one, is the chin strap. Yes, the almighty chin strap. This is the bisexual facial hair. Because it's worn by selfish men. These gentlemen, they wake up in the morning, they want to be bearded, but they also want to be clean shaven. And this cannot be. They're so motivated every morning to get the fine lines across their chin, ever so precise, but they're too damn lazy to remove the sticker from their flat rim hat. I mean, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I don't. I'm not a mean guy. I'm actually a nice guy. I do want to punch those gentlemen when I see them, but I don't. Um, recently, I've been trying to become an organ donor, but she keeps saying no. <laughs> Weird. You guys think I'm a rapist? Is that what it is? <laughs> like it's Rizzo the rapist. All right, good for you. I said that. That's fine. Um, no, but I am a nice guy. Um, when, say, for example, when I'm roaming the streets of Allentown or Elmwood, 
a uh, homeless gentleman comes up to me, I give change from, from time to time because I like to give back. But I also like to be entertained. This one time, this guy came up to me and he goes, dude, all I want is $2 for an old Milwaukee. And I said, listen, Keanu, <laughs> if you would have said PBR, would have kicked you in your hipster dick and sent you on your merry way, but you said, oh, Milwaukee, here's $2, have a good day. <laughs> it's my father. <laughs> you got a job since then, it's fun. The economy's good. But no, um, my favorite interaction with a homeless gent was um, when I was in downtown DC, though. Uh, they have homeless people there. I don't know if you knew this. <laughs> Who knew? This guy comes running up to me and he goes, I'm sorry, I'm black, can I have a dollar? What? <laughs> There's no reason to apologize for your race, good sir. There's no reason for that. You can have a dollar. And he made me question, like, everything about myself. Like, was there, like, a burning cross behind me? Was I wearing a racist outfit? I, it, was I wearing racism, the cologne for angry white men? I have no idea. It's been discontinued. Good thing. That would be bad. But before I leave you, I want to tell you, this. I have a public service announcement for the gentleman in the crowd. If you're ever in a situation where you're with a friend and she's, you're getting the vibe that she wants a little bit more and you just want to stay friends, this is what you do. I went to a wedding with a friend, we had a great time, and afterwards I walked her to her car and I did the worst possible thing you could do to a woman in this very situation. I didn't kiss her. I didn't hug her. I didn't rape her. I knew you were thinking that again. <laughs> I said I had a good night. Boop! And I made the noise too, and we've never talked to this day. I'm very proud of that. So that's how you do it. I love the Duval family. Uh, thank you so much. We'll bring you to Tam back up here. Thank you so much.